morning, guys. It's Tuesday. You know what day it is. That's Water Change Tuesday. So let's talk with Kyle, the service tech tip on a Tuesday. And this is Kyle with your service tech tip Tuesday. All right, we're doing water changes. And why do we do water changes? Because water changes are the key to maintaining a healthy aquarium. It really is. I'm not joking around. So we have these builds up of because it is a closed system, that means nothing is exiting the aquarium and only the stuff is entering the aquarium, be it food or fish waste. All that's going to degrade in the fish, fish tank and stay in the fish tank as, it, uh, as your bacteria cycles it as nitrate. So in order to get the nitrate out of the tank is we have to take the water out and replace it with new fresh water. And that's why doing water changes is so important. It keeps your fish healthy, keeps your bacteria, your bio load healthy. All right, so how often should you do a water change? Well, that's really depending on the variation of your type of aquarium at home. If it's a smaller aquarium, a nano aquarium, you're gonna to wanna to be on top of it more frequently, probably once a week, and you're only gonna to wanna to take about 10% out. Some of the larger aquariums can go longer without water changes, however, but they're gonna need those bigger, larger uh, water changes when it comes down to it, and that means gravel backing, scrubbing, siphoning, blow any any detritus or debris while taking that water out, and the process will help things out a ton. And that's usually right around 25% with those bigger aquariums past 55 gallons. And that should probably be done probably bi-weekly to make, help maintain the, the, the parameters in your tank and the overall health of your fish too. So as you can see, we're doing those water changes, but we also add some additives to the water when we're putting it back in as well. So here at OSA, we like to maintain the pH and we do that a couple of different ways. We use the Fritz pH higher or lower depending on the type of fish in the aquarium. Also, the new regulator get that at 7.0 that we use from SeaCal. All right, so depending on where you get your water from, like from a city or a well, it's going to have different minerals or elements in that water that may be toxic to your fish. For example, city water usually has chlorines or fluorines that are there to uh, help polish the water for human consumption. However, right, so when we're adding water back in now, we're also going to check out our trace elements, pH, and also, also our conditioners. So we're putting those waters in, we're going to want to remove any harmful toxins that may be in the water by using our chlorine removers, like Fritz's uh, Complete or CCAM's Prime, before that water enters our aquarium. Also, we're going to want to make sure that pH is just right before we, either as we're enter, as it's entering the water, or before, by adjusting it with Fritz's pH higher and lower, and also hitting that with some trace, or also some uh, aquarium cleaning uh, bacteria as well. So we do all that while we're out on the road and here for our aquariums right here at OSA. So while we're taking water out, we're putting great new fresh water in with all these additives to make sure their fish stay nice and healthy. And that's a tech tip Tuesday, my friends. <laughs> I can't even do it with a straight face. <laughs>